Hi everyone, I'm Jerry Hardrick, the Amazon LightSail Developer Advocate, and in this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy an Nginx reverse proxy using Amazon LightSail containers. In this video, I'll show you how to create a new container service in Amazon LightSail, how to build an Nginx reverse proxy container and a simple Flask application to act as a web server, and then how to deploy both containers to your container service. For more information about other helpful LightCell tutorials, please read the description that accompanies this video. Let's get started. To begin, log into your AWS account and navigate to the LightCell web console. From here, open the Containers tab and create a new container service. A container service requires a location, a capacity, and a name. The location of your container service determines which AWS region the service will be in. Choosing a location for your container service is just like choosing a location for a LightSail instance or other AWS resource. You might choose a particular region because it's close to your users and will reduce latency, or you might choose a particular region because you have data sovereignty or other regional requirements. I'm going to choose the AWS Oregon region because it's the closest region to my actual location and I'm the only user. The capacity of your container service determines how much power and scale your service will have. The power of your service is defined by the number of virtual CPUs and the amount of memory associated with each node in the service. The scale of your service is defined by the number of nodes it has. The power and scale that you need is determined by the requirements of your particular application. I'm going to go with a single nano node for my first container service, which I know doesn't require much capacity. It's important to know that if your capacity requirements change later on, you can very easily return and update both the power and scale of your container service. The name of your service should follow the documented naming guidelines and provided constraints. This name will become part of the default domain name for your container service, so it needs to be DNS compliant. I'm going to use my first service. Finally, review your container service configuration, make any changes if you need to, and then create the container service. After a few minutes, your container service will be provisioned and ready for use. From the container service page, you can create and review deployments to the service, change the service's capacity, administer custom domains, and view service metrics. Now that you've created your container service, I'll show you how to create and push Docker containers to your LightCell service from the command line. Before you get started, you'll need to install Docker, the AWS command line interface, or CLI, and the LightCell control plugin to your system. Also, I'm using Visual Studio Code in a Linux instance to create and push containers to LightSail. Depending on your system and tools, the UI and commands you see might differ. I'm going to build two containers, the backend web server container using Python Flask and the reverse proxy using Nginx. Let's start with the web server container. To build the web server container, you'll need three files, the application code, a Python requirements file, and a Docker file. Let's look at each one of these briefly, and then we'll build the container. The application code defines a minimal Flask application. It first imports the Flask class and creates an instance of the class. Next, the route decorator tells Flask what URL should trigger our function, in this case, the root directory. That's it. The requirements text file specifies the Python packages that are required by the application. For this minimal Flask application, there's really only one package required, and that's Flask itself. The Docker file specifies how the container image should be built. The from instruction initializes a new build stage and sets the base image. We're using an Alpine variant to keep image sizes small. The expose instruction lets users of this image know that the container will be listening on port 5000, the default Flask port. The remainder of the instructions set the working directory, install dependencies, and copy the main application code. Building the container is as simple as running docker build in the same directory as the docker file, and providing a tag so we can reference it later. After the container is built, 
push it to the LightSail service you created with the push container image command provided by the LightSail CLI plugin. This command includes the name of the container service you created in the previous section, as well as the tag for the container image you just built. This command stores the container image with your container service, and now you can reference it by its unique ID when you create a deployment. To build the reverse proxy container, you'll need two files, the proxy configuration and the Docker file. Let's look at each one of those briefly. The configuration file specifies a simple reverse proxy that listens on port 80 and forwards all requests to the Flask server. The Flask server and port are specified at runtime and substituted into the configuration file then. The Docker file specifies how the container image should be built. The from instruction initializes a new build stage and sets the base image. We're using an Alpine variant of the Nginx master image to keep image sizes small. The copy instruction copies the configuration file to the appropriate location. At runtime, it will be modified to include the Flask server name and port. Building the Nginx container follows the same process as before. Run Docker build in the same directory as the Docker file and provide a tag so it can be referenced later. After the container has been built, push it to the LightCell service using the LightCell push container image command. Now that the service has been created and container image is built, we'll return to the LightCell console to deploy your container service. Back on the container service page, a new tab has appeared called Images. This is where you can view and administer the images stored with your LightCell container service. Here you'll see the two images you just created and pushed from the command line. On the container service page, open the Deployments tab and create a new deployment. A deployment is a set of specifications for the container workload that you want to launch in your container service. A deployment can include up to 10 containers, and each container has a name, an image, and a configuration option. For this video, you'll be deploying two containers to your service, the Nginx proxy container and the Flask web server container. First, we'll configure the proxy container. The name of your container should follow the appropriate naming guidelines and should be something descriptive that allows you to identify your container later. I'm going to use proxy as the name, but others would be useful as well, like web or Nginx. Source container images can come from a public repository like Docker Hub, or can be images that you've created and stored with your container service. For the proxy, choose the Nginx container built in the previous step. You can also provide optional configuration like launch commands, environment variables, and open ports for the container. These dynamic options allow you to provide configuration information to your container when it is created. For the proxy container, you don't need to specify a launch command, but will need to add several environment variables. The output directory lets Nginx know where to put the resulting configuration file after replacing the Flask server name and port variables in the config file with the actual values. The server name and port for the Flask server are used by Nginx to forward requests on port 80 to the Flask web server. Both containers will be running on the same node in the service, so we use localhost, and Flask listens on port 5000. In addition, we'll specify which port the proxy is listening on, port 80. Next, we'll configure the Flask container. Provide a unique name for this container and specify the image the container should use. In this case, the Flask image that you created in the previous section. Next, specify the configuration for the container, including the run command, any environment variables, and open ports. Our Flask app uses the Flask run command and also needs to know where the Flask app is located. In addition, we'll specify the port the Flask app is listening on, port 5000. Public endpoints allow end users or consumers of your service to reach it from the internet. When you specify a public endpoint, LightCell will create a secure public HTTPS endpoint for your service that is accessible from the internet through the default domain name. Because you have more than one container in your service that has open ports, you can choose from any of these containers to act as your public endpoint, but you can only have one public endpoint per container service at a time. For example, the Flask web server could act as the public endpoint, completely bypassing the Nginx proxy if we wanted. That can be useful when debugging. For this app, select the proxy container to act as the endpoint. 
this ensures requests will be routed to the proxy first, which will then forward to the Flask container. After configuring your containers in the endpoint, you can now create your deployment. Creating your deployment will take just a few minutes. During creation, you can monitor the progress of your deployment here on the service page and by viewing the service logs. Once your service has been deployed, you can visit the public endpoint with your browser by clicking on the link on the service page. Here you can verify that both the Nginx proxy and the Flask server have been deployed correctly and are accepting traffic from the Internet. Once you've verified your container service is operating correctly and you're finished with it, you can easily delete your Lights Out Container service and all resources associated with it, including deployments and saved container images. In this video, I've shown you how easy it is to deploy an Nginx reverse proxy in the cloud using Amazon Lights Out Containers. I demonstrated how to create a new container service, how to build and push containers, and how to deploy containers using both the LightCell web console and from the command line. Amazon LightCell Containers is an easy way to get started with cloud containers, particularly for startups, developers, and hobbyists taking their first steps into containerization. You can use Amazon LightCell Containers to learn about containers in the cloud, to gain experience managing containers in the cloud, and you can do so with LightSail's simplified container orchestration. For more information about LightSail containers, please visit the LightSail product page. Thanks.